الله أكبر نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسوله النبي الأمين المكين الحنين الكريم الروف الرحيم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إنما أعذكم بواحدة أن تقوموا لله صدق الله مولانا العظيم My dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters by the grace of Almighty Allah this is my second session of Ar-Risala Al-Qadiriyya In our first session, as I mentioned at the end of my talk, in the last discourse, that first session was for the clarification of concepts basic and fundamental concepts concerning traveling towards Allah so I tried to explain certain basic concepts which are primarily and significantly needed to be understood clearly. Today, inshallah ta'ala, I will read some parts of Ar-Risala Al-Qadiriya that you may get the blessings of Sama and Qira'a. A few words from the original text which I have composed under different topics. I have selected some important stages and steps from a large variety of the stages which are necessary to be understood in this respect. The first step which is indispensable for a traveler and no one can take single step towards his journey on the path of Almighty Allah without this first stage. <laughs> and this stage is I have combined the two terms <coughs> together to explain the first stage. It is al yaqaza one nauma 
Al-Yaqaza means wakefulness. And Al-Qawma means rising up for Allah. Rising up to start your journey on the path to Allah. I will read first sentence from a Risala al Qadriya. Al Yaqaza hiya al intibahu min sinatil ghafla. Wa hiya avvalu ma yastaniru qalbu al abd binuri tambihi fi hayati. فَبِذَلِكَ النُّورِ يَرَى الْعَبْدُ يَرَى السَّالِكُ غَفْلَتَهُ وَذَنْبَهُ وَتَقْسِيرَهُ وَالْقَوْمَ هِيَ أَنْ أَنْ يَقُومَ لِلَّهِ مِنْ نَوْمِ الْغَفْلَةِ كما قال الله تعالى قل إنما أعذكم بواحدة أن تقوموا لله This spiritual first spiritual state wakefulness and rising up refers to to be vigilant as I mentioned yesterday, refers to be cognizant, refers to be conscious against falling victim to heedlessness. All of us almost are sleeping and this spiritual sleep sleep of heedlessness sleep of being careless sleep of negligence because for the reason of this state of negligence, we are totally unaware of our profit and loss. We are unaware about the condition which we are in. We are unconscious about the harmful effects that are going to take place for our wrong deeds, negligence, evil conduct, and wrongful things. We are committing wrongs. We are living a sinful life. Practically, we are negating the guidance of Almighty, sent by Almighty Allah. We are disobeying His commands. We are nullifying the demands or qualities or requirements, prerequisites of being an abd, a servant of Allah. We are doing totally against what is required from us and we still don't know why because we are unconscious as a person sleeping while he sleeps he is unconscious of his surroundings he doesn't know what is happening he is enjoying his deep sleep 
So this is a deep sleep of negligence, unconsciousness and unawareness. Nobody can travel towards Allah. Nobody can start his journey towards Allah unless he wakes up, comes out of the state of sleep of negligence, unless he becomes conscious of his situation. So, becoming vigilant and careful against our condition that we have fallen victim to heedlessness and then resurging and uplifting ourselves from all those matters that would cause stagnation in our life, lassitude in our life, that will lead us to a sinful life that has made us a disobedient servant of Allah. So this is uplifting ourselves from this state of negligence. We never bother about that. We have never pondered. We have never tried to consider our situation, to reflect upon our situation. We never reflect upon our spiritual state. Why? We just believe in love. We believe in aqidat, in respect, in reverence, and we believe in attachment just, and baraka. All these things are definitely beneficial, but after fulfilling the basic requirements, If you think that you will start traveling towards Allah just because you love me, you respect me, you revere me, you are spiritually or cordially attached with me or with any other pious person, I am not among those. Even if you are attached with the pious, with the righteous, with the beloved ones, still with simple attachment and loving someone and respecting someone, you cannot come out of the sleep of negligence and heedlessness. You need something to do. The first thing is to research and uplift ourselves from this state. And if you become wakeful, this would be a spiritual heart that is sought to be enlightened with the light of teachings of Quran, teachings of Sunnah, admonition, and guidance. This al yaqaza and al qawma means illumination of heart. This wakefulness is a light through which you are able to understand or you are able to discern your own carelessness, your own quality of life, your own spiritual state of heart. You can understand the quality of your heart. You can 
understand the condition of sinfulness in our the condition of our shortcomings and the outcome of this effort that is awakening and rising up will open a gate towards the pleasure of almighty allah and you will be unable to start your journey to him that's why a part of the quranic verse which i have recited in the beginning from surah saba verse number 46 almighty allah says qul say o oh my beloved prophet innama a'izukum bi wahida i advise you to do one thing only i advise you to do one thing only and that is you rise for allah's sake stand up rise for allah's sake this was the first message revealed to holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in surah al mudaththir and al muzammil when he said qum fa anzir stand up you can't start your journey unless you stand up from the sleep of heedlessness and negligence so you have to stand up this is a spiritual awakening this is not physically standing up no this is spiritual standing up spiritual awakening of your own inner condition of sinfulness then i have written fa hiya awwalu manazil awwalu manazil at-tariq al-yaqaza that the very first station in the spiritual voyage is wakefulness and this process of wakefulness agitates your heart agitates your heart towards vigilance against the repose and relaxing mode of the unmindful unmindful people heedless people careless people are always in a relaxing mood they don't feel disturbed they don't know that a lot of harm has occurred to them they can't appreciate what is going to happen with them in the life year after that's why they are relaxed moving around walking around like a dead body is walking around on the earth this attentiveness is astonishing and it has very intense impact getting redemption freedom from the grip of negligence and heedlessness this is the first stage you have to work hard for it you have to strive hard for it all other things which we believe and which we trust and which we practice in our life would then become beneficial for you of course every good act has a blessing no one is deprived of the blessings and reward and ajr and thawab but if you want the spiritual impact on your life so that you may be able to travel towards almighty allah and knock the door of nearness of almighty allah this is the way 
अदरवाइज थ्रू आउट योर लाइफ यू विल रिमेन कन्फाइंड टू हीड लेसनेस एंड दिस इज डेथ ऑफ द हार्ट डेथ ऑफ द सोल वेन सर्वेंट्स ऑफ आल माइटी अल्लाह ऑब्जर्व वेक फुलनेस they become wakeful then one what they do after achieving the state of wakefulness they become equipped with motiv- motivation to traverse in the spiritual path towards allah they try to equip themselves for their journey and you know what the equipment is if you are aimed at starting a journey you need to equip yourself without equipment without fulfilling the needs of journey nobody can start traveling so first thing of equipment is that you achieve a condition of readiness for setting out on the journey towards allah you feel yourself ready to set out on the journey towards allah this cordial condition becomes your mental state then you have shifted yourself from negligence to the station of wakefulness and decisiveness and determination this determination after equipping yourself for the journey is known as azm this is the azm which strengthens your intention this is indispensable condition for spiritual wayfaring then there are some signs of this azm this equipment this readiness whether you are ready to travel towards allah or not whether you are equipped to start your journey towards almighty allah or not there are some signs or we can say there are some fruits of that wakefulness and readiness or signs through which you can identify your condition and these are مفارقه كل قاطع ومؤفق ومرافقه كل معين وموصل وبحسب كمال يقظته وانتباهه يكون عزمه وبحسب حسب قوه عزمه يكون قصده وبحسب قوه عزمه يكون قصده وبحسب قوه قصده يكون استعداده فاذا استيقظ الصالح اوجبت له الفكره وهي تحديق القلب نحو المطلوب نحو المقصود the sign of this wakefulness of this resolve now you can judge whether really you are equipped or you have achieved the state of readiness or not so you can decide through these signs and the first basic fundamental and decisive sign of readiness is that you start distancing yourself i am repeating you start distancing yourself from every form of hindrance 
that will hinder you from the path of Allah. Every form of obstruction that will stop you from going forward towards Almighty Allah. So you have to, yesterday I mentioned al-ilm, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. We have stopped seizing, getting knowledge. We have stopped seized, putting efforts on receiving knowledge. We are receiving knowledge of medicine, receiving knowledge of science and technology, receiving knowledge of all degrees that are required for our better economic future, for our better economic stability, for our prosperous, materially prosperous life. We are preparing ourselves for all these things except for equipping ourselves to be able to walk towards Almighty Allah. And this is impossible unless we distance ourselves from every form of hindrance and obstruction which may stop you in your journey which may create a stagnance or stagnation in your journey, which may create an obstacle in your journey, you have to distance yourself from all these forms. You know, just recite with me Surah Al-Fatiha, two verses of Surah Al-Fatiha. We supplicate and we Pray Almighty Allah, Ihdina Auz Billah Mini Shaitwan Jim. Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Show us the right path. Then Almighty Allah has defined the right path. What is the right path? He says, Sirat al Ladina an Amta Alayhim. Right path. As Sirat al Mustaqim is the path of those whom Almighty Allah has blessed with His special favors. The path of the blessed ones. Follow their path, read them, look into their lives, study them. Get close to their company. Get something out of their company and relationship and following. This is their hadj, their way of life. More than 5,000 people used to sit in a majlis of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. when he used to deliver his lecture, his talk, out of 5,000 people, students, 500 used to take notes of ilm. Used to take notes of ilm, knowledge which he was delivering, giving. And 4,500 people, they used to just look at him, to see him. How he sits, how he talks, how he walks, how he does, what is his conduct? So 500 people used to write down his knowledge and 4,500 people used to register in their hearts his adab, his way of life, his manners, his conduct. His behavior, his norms of life, his morals, way of his life, way of his walking, way of his talking, way of his smiling, way of his dealing with other people. They just used to be silent and look at him and they were registering every single moment, movement in every moment of his life, registering in the heart. So this is how to learn things. 
not only to look at someone with love or with aqidat or with respect and reverence that is also an act of blessing i don't deny it but try to receive something more beneficial out of this look awliya salihin ahlullah and the righteous their life and their persons are like books they are the books as you look at them look at them as if you are reading their book and the way quran says the right path is the path of the blessed ones but it doesn't work only this following the path of the blessed people getting connected only with the blessed people loving and respecting the blessed ones only this thing doesn't work the almighty allah has conditioned this definition with the next article saying ghair al maghdub alaihim wal dawali amin this connection will never benefit you unless you distance yourself from those things which take you away from the righteousness so one side is to get connected with righteousness through the pious other side is to get disconnected with the evil what is our lifestyle we combine the both we combine try to combine keep on goodness and we keep on the evil thing in our life we put them together so whatever we receive we lose more than that the amount we receive of goodness we receive we lose more than that through bad company so every good connection requires disconnection of evil there can be no real connection beneficial connection without a disconnection there can be no vassal without fasl you can't meet without leaving someone you can't meet someone without leaving someone both things can't go together this is the crisis of our life so first thing is that to distance when you get equipped the the sign of equipment or readiness is that you start distancing yourself from bad things from bad companies from bad friendships bismillah ar rahman we are overconfident in this present era i have seen the culture has made people over confident everyone thinks that oh i am not going to be harmed i am not going to be affected alhamdulillah i understand right and wrong i can differentiate between good and evil so it is not going to affect me this is the <laughs> first destructive step step of destruction everyone is going to be affected everyone is going to be affected no one is safe no one is secure almighty allah has not created exceptions in this surah al fatiha that distancing yourself from bad companies friendships and bad associations is necessary for those and those these and this and that and some people can be exempt almighty allah has not created any clause of exemption here this is a basic principle applied to everyone the difference is only the effects of bad company sometimes appear quickly in some people sometimes it take long time slowly and slowly unless the the mindset and way of thinking starts changing 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 and the virtue starts 
you start looking virtue as vice slowly your mind is changed your thoughts are changed your ideas are changed your conclusions are changed and it comes later when your lifestyle is affected that's why the basic thing is as soon as you start equipping yourself for the traveling towards almighty allah at the same moment you should distance yourself from all those obstacles and hindrances which will become harmful for your journey you are desiring the nearness and there are many things in your in our life which take you away from the objective from the your beloved one whose nearness you are going to seek so there are two opposite things this is one thing and instead we should associate with every good thing and every good characteristics that can support and connect you to that divine goodness distancing yourself from the evil and i have explained what evil is a simple definition of the evil simple definition anything which may take you far from the nearness of allah far from the prayer of allah which may loosen your strength of faith which may make you lazy and relax which may take you again back to the sleep of negligence which may weaken your deen your iman your ghaira your shock of ibada excitement of your ibada for example you started getting excited in the time of ibada you should feel after praying for salat you should wait for next time of salat because next i have prayed zuhr now i am waiting for salatul asr because the prayer time is the meeting time with the beloved prayer time is the time of meeting with beloved so the one who feels disturbed while waiting for the next meeting time this is a sign that you are equipping yourself to travel towards almighty allah when you feel this excitement is coming down level of this excitement level of this taste level of this inclination level of this beautiful condition is reducing is in decreasing is coming down at the same time you should stop and think what is happened to what is happening to me i am losing i am going back so once you become a traveler and some act of ghafla takes place in your life some act of disobedience some act of displeasure some evil act which is which may become the reason of the wrath of your beloved lord takes place in your life so what he does al iraz enters in your life as a traveler as a salik he turns his face away from you and when he turns his face away you lose the level of excitement lazzat taste beautiful taste of worshiping beautiful taste of recitation beautiful taste of remembering almighty allah beautiful taste of standing on prayer mat beautiful taste while prostrating in front of almighty allah so all these kafiyat and conditions and state of your heart you should watch them are they increasing or are they decreasing if they start decreasing it means 
irad has happened my beloved lord has turned his face from me no need to ask anyone else i am giving you the key i am giving you the bell in your hand the i am giving you the uh, uh, formula everyone can assess as soon as you find losing this condition or lessening or decreasing this condition for, without any delay you should go for repentance cry repent ask seek forgiveness again and again seek forgiveness and cry for that your heart should not feel relaxation don't feel relaxed the blessing is being snatched from you cry forgiveness repent repentance keep on doing unless the situation comes back unless the same level is restored but be honest you can think i don't want any answer that if anything happen do you feel so much upset as you lose your job if you get a hint that next month you may lose your job you become upset you may fail in your exam you get we get upset all benefits of this world make us upset if we feel their loss but if we feel the loss of our spiritual condition it never makes us upset it means we have ruined we have been ruined we have been destroyed the purpose of this session and this sohba is to come out of the state of ruin and destruction <laughs> so the strength of one's resolve will be according to his equipment according to his intensity and strength of his decision his wakefulness and intensity of his intent intention will define the degree of his preparedness so when the spiritual wayfarer awakens and rises to allah it necessitates becoming contemplative by self scrutiny he should start self scrutiny scrutinize his positions day and night so that he may navigate his heart he may show the right path to his heart this self scrutinization will become a navigator navigation for the heart and when heart is guided and secured from these kind of dangers then heart always keeps on paying attention towards its destination so when this thought process and safety process is rectified and your heart is secure from these dangers and you are always watchful always watchful of these conditions then almighty allah gives you basira that is spiritual insight basira is a light which almighty allah places in the heart of his righteous persons those who are equipped to travel to him and through basira he discerns and he differentiates between right and wrong and between the acts which will lead him towards the rewards and the acts which will lead him towards the punishment so in a nutshell فالحاصل انا اقول ان اليقظه 
ہے یا بدا یا تو سفر العزم و الحمت من دنیا الاخرا و من المعصیت الطا و من الغرور ال تقوا و من الحرس ال زہد و من البخل ال سخا و من شک ال یقین ان نٹ شیل آئی ول کنکلوڈ دیٹ ویک فلنیس از دا انیشیشن آف دا جرنی ٹوڈ ریئلائزنگ دا ریزول اینڈ ڈیٹرمنیشن آف شفٹنگ فوکس فرام دس ٹیمپرل ورلڈ ٹو دا پرمننٹ لائف ایئر آفٹر سو تھرو دس یق ازا ویک فلنیس وی شفٹ اوور فوکس we shift our priority this is wakefulness if we have not shifted our priority and focus from this temporal and material world to that permanent and everlasting world after death where you are going to be rewarded and you are going to be blessed with the presence of almighty allah and nearness of almighty allah and the blessings of almighty allah's prayer are going to shower upon you if you are your focus is not shifted from this temporal and material world to that higher world then it means that wakefulness is not secure or is not complete or not secure so completion of wakefulness means shifting of our focus we are totally defocused and then we have to transform from a state of sin it automatically this is a transformation from a state of sin to a state of obedience this wakefulness this is a shifting from state of arrogance to the state of piety and humbleness this shifts from insatiability to renunciation of this world from miserliness to magnanimity or generosity and from doubt to certainty of faith in this way the wayfarer or the salik becomes a self vigilant and observant and he is able to achieve the next stage of irada this was just wakefulness wakefulness leads him towards irada the sincerity of intention اللہ اکبر آل مائٹی اللہ سیز ان سورہ العراف ولا تکم من الغافلین آئی واز پلاننگ ایٹ لیسٹ ٹین اسٹیپس ٹو مینشن ان ٹو ڈیز ٹاک آئی براڈ مائی ٹین آرٹیکلس آف رسالہ قادریہ آئی ایم اسٹل آن دا فسٹ آئی ڈونٹ نو ہاؤ مینی اسٹیپس آئی ووڈ بی ایبل ٹو کور ٹو ڈے but whatever you can understand and absorb in your mind and take it with you and apply in your life is enough almighty allah says wala takum min al ghafilin and do not be among the negligent mashallah mashallah this is a good support do not be among the negligent almighty so ghafla is something that almighty allah wants us to come out of that wala takum min al ghafilin don't remain in state of ghafla negligence and then quran says at another occasion walaqad wassalna lahum alqawl la'allahum yatadhakkarun if you are sleeping your heart and your mind 
both are in state of negligence sleep of ghafla sleep of heedlessness what difference does it make if anybody keeps on giving lectures and speeches and quranic recitations and awrad and wazaif and reading books what difference does it make you are sleeping i am not talking of awakening of eyes this physical eyes no i am talking of awakening of hearts our hearts are sleeping they are in deep sleep of negligence and heedlessness so there is no practical or functional benefit of all these things which we expect the results of which we expect all material says first of all come out of the state of negligence from ghafla and then how to come out interesting thing allah says and we kept sending for them successive commandments and successive messages so that they might benefit from the remembrance successive commands successive messages it should be a continuous process you should take tazakkur you should listen to the message of guidance every day not only every day many times a day you have to repeat this listening again and again quran says walaqad wassalna lahumul qaul we have been sending successively our commands of guidance and our messages of guidance why la allahum yatazakkarun so that repeatedly successively receiving the messages of my guidance they might be able to benefit from the remembrance almighty allah asked holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fa dhakkir inna ma anta mudhakkir oh my beloved prophet remind him again remind them again and again so the reminder should be successive should be repeatedly every time you take three meals three times a day you take breakfast you take lunch you take dinner whatever quantity it is depends upon your own choice but you take something three times a day in the same way at least take the food of tazakkur of remembrance when you almighty allah has fixed five times a day so five times a day is not fulfilling the tradition of praying no five times a day means getting connected to almighty allah try to get connect yourself five times a day pray mat your musalla is the meeting place with your beloved make your pray mat the meeting place with your beloved create this intense love with almighty allah and become true seekers of guidance from all those moments and acts which can give you the light of almighty god so then third thing when you receive the messages regularly repeatedly every day and you keep on connecting yourself on every day basis then you will be able to benefit from the remembrance or from benefit from the admonition we think that just sitting in a speech session lecture session we will benefit from it this is not quranic principle listening is something different than benefiting of course you are listening but i can't say you are benefiting
yes we can say through listening if you understand the point it is a benefit it is a benefit but understanding is an act of intellect act of mind it is not act of heart if you understand you perceive and conceive something it is going to your mind to your intellect to your dimag it is not entering into your heart heart is still sleeping you have to give him wakefulness unless heart is wakeful awakes comes out of the state of negligence you can't benefit from listening and understanding these are two different things interconnected but two different identities different entities there's why quran says in surah araf auz billahi minash shaitan rajim innal ladina taqaw iza massahum ta'ifun minash shaitan tadhakkaru faiza hum mubsirun four things have been mentioned in this verse very special points indeed those who are vigilant of god those who become vigilant of god become god conscious become mindful of god all these are the different meaning words so those who are god vigilant when a visitation from shaitan touches them still muttaqin they are not saved from the touch of shaitan this is quran innal ladina taqaw those who have become vigilant of god almighty have become muttaqi iza massahum ta'ifun min ash-shaytan when a visitation from shaitan touches them they can still be touched by shaitan muttaqi the righteous the god vigilant can be touched by shaitan then what happens said if shaitan touches them those who are god vigilant and muttaqi they after that they remember almighty allah's presence tazakkaru they start remembering allah's presence and allah's command third thing because their heart was awake and their heart felt that shaitan has touched me so all of a sudden they the awake heart the wakeful heart reminds him of almighty allah's command tazakkaru then they remember his presence and then faiza hum absirun behold then they start perceiving through the eyes of their hearts these are quranic principles <laughs> we replace quranic principles by our own thoughts and ideas and assumptions now this awakening of heart awakening has three foundations i feel i brought 10 steps to discuss today and i think the i will be able only to finish maybe one maybe two allah allah knows better awakening of heart yaqaza an nawma has three foundations how do you know that our heart has become wakeful i am giving you the signs seeing god number one first sign foundation is seeing god as the source of abundant blessings and seeing yourself as the source of abundant errors and sins when your heart starts seeing this way when your heart starts seeing visualizing starts realizing that allah is the source of all abundant blessing in my life none of the blessings is my achievement none of the favors and blessings and goodness which i feel i taste 
I experience in my life, none of them is because of me. Every good thing has been blessed by Almighty Allah, has emerged from His presence, has been showered through His mercy, and whatever affliction befalls my life, and whatever wrong, whatever harm, whatever calamity, whatever disaster, whatever bad or evil thing takes place in my life, I am the sole reason of that. Wakeful heart, first sign is that it starts seeing the matters like this. The second, heart starts discerning or recognizing the quality of your life by a criterion. What is the quality of your life? How, what kind of life you are living? Starts, keeps a standard, heart keeps a standard to observe, to identify, to realize and to decide about our quality of life, good or bad, through differentiating between spiritual profit and spiritual loss. Not profit and loss of this world. So, you know, criterion of heart is changed. We think normally what is beneficial for us in the worldly manners. This is our loss, this is not good for me, I should do this, this will give me a good chance, vagaira, vagaira. But heart, when your heart becomes wakeful, it differentiates and decides about, judges about the quality of your life through differentiating between spiritual benefit and spiritual loss, not worldly benefit and worldly loss. And third sign is that your heart becomes watchful of all deceptions. You are not deceived. by superstitions and self-concocted or self-fabricated ideas and thoughts. No, these are deceptions, delusions. Your heart is watchful of deceptions and delusion and is always fearing of fearing Allah's wrath. These are the three foundational signs of wakefulness of heart. Then Allah's blessings, as I mentioned, that heart sees that all blessings are from Allah. I am not the reason. So Allah's blessings, these blessings of awakening, may be received, these blessings may be received through three things. This is a great blessing that our heart becomes wakeful. We get rid of the deep sleep of negligence. So this can be achieved. Now a definite question might be in your minds. How can we achieve this state of awakening? I am coming to that thing. Again there are three ways. Putting, you have to put them together. How we can achieve the wakefulness of heart. al yaqaza wal qawma. How can we come out of this state of negligence and sleep of heedlessness? Number one, through imploration of the heart. Your heart should be very always humble and your heart would be a begging heart for Allah's mercy and help. There should be no arrogance in your heart. There should be no adamance in your heart. You understand some people are adamant. So I am saying no adamancy or no adamance in your heart. No hesitation in begging Almighty for Allah's mercies. There should be no stagnance in your heart. No hardness in your heart. Your heart should be very soft. 
humble like a beggar's heart always begging for the mercy of almighty allah oh my lord i am nothing i will be lost i will be destroyed i would be ruined if you don't shower your mercy upon me if you don't save me if you don't secure me so the first is condition is that the man should not depend on the good condition of his own heart that i am safe and i am secure and i am i am safe from all harm no everybody is can suffer from harm no one is safe no one is secure everyone has to be a beggar in front of the door of almighty allah knocking for his forgiveness for his mercy for his help so that he may save you he may save me this is the first condition which i am saying imploration of the heart the second foundational thing is how to achieve the wakefulness is through willingness to listen to knowledge and admonition complete willingness to listen to knowledge and admonition ilm and zikr ilm and tazakkur admonition most of us are willing to listen to knowledge but we are not willing to listen to admonition here comes arrogance i understand everything i was born in england i was born in canada i was born in america i am mentioning the countries the boys and girls who have come from those countries i have seen the faces i am i was born in denmark born in norway born in france born in netherlands born in sweden i was born in north america in britain i studied in this and that university i i know everything i have studied i don't need admonitions this is arrogance of heart arrogance of mind and this arrogance is why this arrogance is there because of deep sleep of negligence heart is dead we are don't feel readiness to listen to the admonition admonition is an admonition whether you listen from the mouth of a lunatic from the mouth of a person who is apparently lower in rank than you not more knowledgeable maybe but still he can say a word of admonition listen to the world of admonition don't look at the man look at the world and try to receive something good beneficial out of that world of admonition if you are always ready to listen to admonition and knowledge you will feel that you are enabling yourself for the wakeful of your heart and number 3 by pure sustenance and provision look my halal earning and eating with halal and lawful and pure means if you are intermingling the things with wrong and impure matters so this harm this impure eating can never allow your heart to be wakeful and then the next thing is that always you should be protected from deceptions fearing from allah fearing allah's wrath so this condition of fearing allah's wrath is also achieved through three things and this leads to wakefulness of heart three things then another three things totally will become six first three were the signs foundations of wakefulness of heart now six modes are how to achieve wakefulness of heart three the first three we have already discussed now the second set of three allah fearing allah's wrath always 
helps you in achieving wakefulness of heart. What are the things which can help you, help you creating fear of Almighty Allah's wrath so that it may become a reason for the wakefulness of heart. Number one, imagining the worst of yourself. Bismillah. Imagining the worst of yourself. Number two, cutting away yourself from lowly attachments. Cutting away, as I mentioned, distancing yourself from evils. Cutting away yourself from lowly attachments. Attachment may be of any kind, with persons, with things, with desires which hopes, which relations, everything. Lowly these attachments which will take you away from Almighty Allah and always glorifying God and His commands as much as possible. These six things will help you in awakening of your heart. Let us suppose that we, our heart is, has become wakeful. But you have to practice all these six things every day, every time, and whatever I have mentioned up to this, this segment, which I have finished, you have to practice every single thing. When you become, when you have a feeling of wakefulness, or you feel equipped to travel towards God, then the first step which you have to take after the wakefulness of heart is a tawbah. Repentance. Almighty Allah says that the return, return, turning to Almighty Allah in repentance it is an obligation, individual obligation upon every single Muslim, obedient or disobedient, pious or unpious. This is individual obligation. Allah Ta'ala says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا And repent to Allah all together. Repentance is not only for sinful peoples. It is for all people even for the prophets and messengers. Holy Prophet ﷺ used to repent 70 times or 100 times a day. Every single day. He used to repent for 70 to 100 times. So repentance is not some act which is sought to be practiced or, or performed after committing a sin, no. It is itself an obligation, a continuous obligation for everyone. Almighty Allah says, just consider how Almighty Allah states. He says, and whoever does not repent, such are the actual wrongdoers. He didn't say those who commit wrongful acts, those who commit sins are actual the wrongful or wrongdoers. No. He says, those who do not repent are actually the wrongdoers. Almighty Allah has categorized His servants as either penitent slaves or as oppressors to themselves. Either they are penitent 
things are forgiven if they don't repent they are oppressors they are azalimun there is no third group whatsoever in note how what kind of language powerful language almighty allah has used the term the wrong doers zalimun or tyrant this term has been used for the unrepentant those who don't repent so there is nobody more unjust or more wrong doer than the unremorseful on account of ignorance concerning the lord then there are five obligations of repentance faraidu tauba five obligations one to regret the wrong doings perpetrated committed and to feel sorrowful for the offenses that were enacted in the past the first thing to regret and to feel sorrowful to feel remorseful for the offenses which he has already committed one thing this feeling this feeling should exist in your heart number 2 immediately ceasing from every type of sin and evil doing in the present remorseful from the acts were which were committed in the past and to cease every kind of sinful act in the present and to decide firmly not to resolve to impious offenses in future being remorseful on the past securing your present time and protecting yourself not to return to toward the sin in future number 3 a uh, four to make up for those obligatory or incumbent acts that were omitted whatever was omitted mandatory acts or whatever wrong were committed to make up all those things and number 5 to compensate for any injustices committed against other people huquq al ibad as and when necessary if you don't compensate for the unjust acts which you have committed concerning other people which you have infringed their rights transgressed their rights you have committed wrongs concerning other people so you have to compensate those raddul mazalim these five things are the major obligations of repentance in repentance is not complete without these five things all together then there are some indicators of sound repentance taubat an nusu sound accepted repentance it has some indicators that the repentance is accepted in the divine court of almighty allah the one first one the repentant senses feels hatred towards every sin and act of disobedience then a hatred should emerge in his heart towards act of disobedience act of sins he should feel hate he should hate number 2 he should experience emotions of tender heartedness and he should find one self ready for weeping when he remind when he remembers that thing he should experience these kind of emotions along with this tender heartedness second these are the indicators of the acceptance of tauba repentance number 3 he should feel that his heart 
and temperament both are willingly leaning towards the commands of almighty allah and leaning towards the acts of piety and piousness he should feel leaning number 4 he should find his self inclining away from bad companions friends companies if you repent and still remain in bad company after repentance you continue your evil connections evil attachments evil company then this is no repentance you should feel that your heart is now inclined to go away to cut relationship from the bad companions bad friends bad peers and bad places and number 5 he should learn that his self his own soul feels unmotivated to be involved in situations of disobedience there should be no more motivation for disobedience in his heart or all acts which oppose allah's commandment he should not find any motivation further motivation for these sinful acts number 6 he should perform more acts of goodness more acts of piety after repentance then prior to it seven he should sense blissfulness in performing good deeds excitement a pleasure in performing good deeds he should be consistent number 8 in allah's remembrance recitation of quran recitation of litanies all litanies aurad wazaif tilawat durood istighfar all litanies he should be consistent in those with presence of heart in allah's glory he should feel his heart is present in almighty allah's nearness he should feel this presence and number 9 he should sense emotions of broken heartedness abasement about himself humility submissiveness in the presence of almighty allah and he should feel a constant state of fear until he hears the announcement of the angels at the moment of the departure of the soul it means till the last moment of his life he should continue all these conditions in his heart in order to make this step of repentance successful the first step in the journey towards almighty allah after wakefulness of heart how we can achieve this knowledge we should receive the knowledge knowledge is life and wisdom comes through knowledge wisdom is a mirror contentment being radi pleased and content with allah's command is a protective wall for your spirituality and keeping hope upon allah's mercy so this hope is a mediator an intercessor and remembering almighty allah every time continuous remembrance is a remedy of your loss and repentance is the cure i would say that repentance is the sign post on the path spiritual path repentance is the key to the spiritual treasure 
repentance is secret of all happiness there are three kinds of repentance the repentance of the obedient devotees servants obedient devotees their repentance repentance of the sinner and repentance of the saint and the gnostic everyone repents so repentance of the obedient devotee why is that needed it comes from the reliance in his own obedience those who are obedient devotees sometimes but a time comes they may rely on their own obedience and they may consider their own acts of devotion to be of great importance when own acts of worship and acts of piety and acts of righteousness are magnified in their eyes in order to protect themselves from this sin they have to repent always repeatedly and repeatedly that they don't look at their own acts of worship they don't look at their own act of piety they don't look at their own act of charity and generosity they don't look at their own act of kindness and mercy and, and compassion towards other whatever good act he performs he should be blind about that he should not be able to see his good acts since eyes see these things so he is needed to repent again and again the repentance of the sinner the sinful people it comes from seeing his sins and acts of disobedience or acts of transgression as insignificant as light of things the sinner he needs repentance why because whatever sins he commits he takes them insignificant he doesn't take them seriously he doesn't take them so harmful he is that's why he is relaxed so his repentance comes from this vision and repentance of the saints and gnostics come from lesser gratitude for god's conferral of favors and blessings upon him allah's blessings are much more upon those people whatever thankfulness whatever gratitude they offer to almighty allah is much lesser than the amount of the blessings which almighty allah has conferred upon them that's why the saints the awliya and anbiya and awliya and urafa and abdal and qutb and khos of all time they always repent because when they see towards their acts of worship they look at their acts of thankfulness and gratitude and then they look at the amount of the blessings and favors which almighty allah has showered upon them they see that his blessings are too much more than the amount of the thankfulness and worship which i offer to him this is how they remain humble you can't be humble unless you look at the amount of allah's blessings upon your life in your life he make you human being he would have made you a, an animal he made you one member of the umma of holy prophet he would have made us among the non believers he gave us good health he gave us he made us faithful he gave us knowledge he gave us health he gave us wisdom he gave us degree a house car good health everything honor izzat respect in our life children many kind of supports and helps and many kind of luxuries in our life these are just worldly things but when you come to the spiritual world you can't imagine and you can't number 
So the Gnostics and Aliya and Anbiya alayhim salam, they always look at the amount of the blessings of Allah which he has showered upon them. And then they see their sujood, their ruku, their salat, their ibadah, their sadaqa, their khairat, their da'wa, their tabliq, all acts of worship, acts of preaching, acts of goodness and acts of piety. When they collect all of these acts, they see it is nothing in front of the favors of Almighty Allah and mercy of Allah. So they fall down. So repentance is necessary for everyone. Every blessing which Allah Almighty Allah has showered upon you. He gave you a good house, a good family, good relationship, good honor, knowledge, many things. Look at every single blessing that Almighty Allah has showered upon you. And then see our acts of worship for thankfulness are nothing in front of his Bama. This is the. Then setting, we set great stock and reliance in our own obedience. We, we rely on our own obedience, acts of worship, good acts. Whatever acts we do as an individual or as a jamaat or as an organization, whatever we do. We should not rely on, upon those things. How we can get rid of this? The first thing is that see own, one's own, we should see own obedient devotion as the constituting one's savior and protector. We pray, we fast, we do good acts, we help mankind, we support other people. All acts of piety and all acts of goodness we do. We think these are our savior. All these acts of piety and acts of worship will save us from the hellfire. We see our good acts as our savior. And protector. So this is reliance. We have to cut this reliance. No good act is our savior. Just Allah's grace and mercy is our savior and protector. <laughs> the second is we regard with contempt those who neglect their acts of devotion or worship. We magnify our acts of devotions and consider as if our good acts will save us from hellfire. And as for others, we magnify their mistake and their evil thing. And whatever those who are committing, who are neglecting the acts of devotion, who have become disobedient, who are committing mistakes and faults and living sinful life, we look at them with contempt, with lowliness. We think we consider them down low. So this is how we look at the sins of others and look at the pieties and goodness of our own. For wakeful, a wakeful heart looks the things in different direction. He looks fault in his own self and looks goodness in other people. And then third thing is that not investigating the defects in one's own actions. We are performing lot many acts and deeds, but we never try to find our own defects. We never try to find defects in our actions, in our conduct, in our behavior. We try to find the faults in others' conduct. That's why most of us people are speaking about others. He did this and he did this and he is not good, he has done this. 
act of transgression is not uh, a good thing to do. We are always thinking about that, but we never say, we never look at our own defects. Wakeful heart makes you blind concerning others' faults. And beholding your own sins and acts of transgression insignificant. If we commit sins, we consider our sins insignificant. And other people's sin we consider very significant. And if we commit wrongs, we consider insignificant. So, there is a solution to this also. The first is considering oneself as deserving for, of forgiveness by God. How we consider, how we consider our own sins and acts of transgression insignificant. How do we do? Why we do that? We don't look at our own faults and we don't get disturbed by our own faults. Why? There are three reasons. Three reasons. The first is we consider ourselves deserving of Allah's forgiveness. We take it as granted. We consider ourselves deserving, deserving of Allah's forgiveness. And don't consider other people deserving at that for the same forgiveness. The second is remaining at peace while we are persisting in sin. We are living a sinful life, but we remain in peace and relax. That's why we can't find our faults. The third is having intimate friendship with bad company, with wicked people, with evildoers. Intimate friendship, the company, intimate company, friendship, attachment. This thing will never let you go towards Almighty Allah. You have to cut your relationships of your heart, of the company. Do have the link and attachment with people as far as your job is required, your class, your school is required, whatever is necessary for this worldly life, keep up to that limit. Don't go beyond that. Going beyond that is poison. That's why Almighty Allah says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَأَتَاسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ وَأَخْلَصُوا دِينَهُمْ لِلَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ But those who repent and make amends and reform themselves, reform themselves and establish a firm bond with Allah وَأَتَاسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ they establish a firm relationship and bond with Allah. And establishing this firm bond with Allah is not possible unless you cut your bond with Ghair Allah. With those who take you against Allah's command. And they make their devotion sincere for Allah. They will be in the beneficial company of the believers. Only these people will benefit from the company of righteous, of the righteous. Almighty Allah has given a condition. Almighty Allah has fixed a condition. One thing is that I can continue the same subject, next steps, tomorrow we will see. I don't want to um, leave the important things. But let me conclude today's talk on the subject. Whatever we have mentioned up till now, and inshallah we will mention certain important things tomorrow. All these things require hard work. 
all these things requires very important focus. And there are some destructive ideas and theories and slogans and harmful influences of this modern culture for our life. As the time is passing, we are going away from hard work. And Allah says always strive hard, struggle hard, strive hard, continuously, patiently, steadfastly. Striving hard, patiently and steadfastly needs to be focused for long time, focused for longer times, longer intervals. The present time has and present culture, my dear sons and daughters, very important point where I am finishing today's lecture. Be attentive. Our present time, in the present time, the typical attention span, because you can't do hard work for a long time unless you can continue your focus on that. In present time, the typical attention span with our wrong thoughts and ideas is, has been made, I would say, has been made accepted to be around 20 to 30 minutes. Now our present generations, they are not ready to listen with full focus, anything, any admonition, lecture, knowledge, more than 30 to 20 minutes. They say, we lose our focus. It's not possible for us. Should be very small intervals. This is a fitna and shaitan of modern culture. These are misguiding slogans. Everything is sponsored. There are hidden agendas behind these things. But we don't know. We, these are destructive theories. We have to come out of that. And what we say, 20 to 30 minutes reflects the window during which individual can maintain focused and engaged cognitive activity. These ideas have been implanted in our minds. We are recipients. We are buying the ideas. And this time frame is often used as a guideline for designing effective learning sessions. Workshops are going on these principles. Presentations, work intervals. And this has already been pushed in prominent podcasts under the pretext of productivity hacks. More breaks, less work is the advice. More break, less work is the advice. More breaks, less time of work is advice. This is the slogan of this time. How you will get a continuous focus, how you will be able to put your hard, strive hard, how you will be able to struggle hard. And I have a prediction. In future, this time frame, 20 to 30 minutes, will shrunk, would be shrunk down to 10 to 15 minutes. This is deliberate, this is by design. To get rid of focus and to get rid of commitment to the hard work and to finish the leadership from coming future generations. so that the coming younger, younger generations and youth, they have insufficient knowledge. They have lack of depth. They have feelings of boredom and contribute to a decline in emerging leaders of the next generation. No emerging leadership. Leadership is finished. And it will lead you to to the, prof to the lack of profound insights and lack of vision for your life. Time was same, people were same, human being were same, psychology was same, brain was same, capacities and abilities were same. 
just the theories have changed with an agenda all scientists philosophers scholars they used to continue a long time deep research and scientific inquiries for days and days sometimes they forgot to eat their focus was never disturbed imam azam abu hanifa he used to he, he spent 40 years of his life from salatul isha to salatul fajr he was never defocused imam shafi did the same he never lost his focus ghazali did the same huzur sidna ghosul azam from salatul isha to salatul fajr whole span with the same focus same quality of focus and same concentration i have experience in my life around 30 years of my life i spent from i used to sit from salatul maghrib abbabin to fajr and ishraq the whole night i never lost my focus my dear sons and daughters i have chosen this last point for your benefit i think this is the most important aspect along with the spiritual advancement for our time when i used to study in my young age my teachers started giving me lessons and i used my lessons and studies right from 3 am to 11 pm 20 hours i have been studying with only breaks for prayers and and meals small break of breakfast small break of lunch in the evening meal and prayers except these breaks i used to spend 20 hours consistently my focus remained the same while studying the first lesson and the same while studying the last at 11 o'clock this was the norm this was my norm for at least 30 around 30 years of my life and not this is not my miracle don't take it as miracle thousands of scholars and teachers and mashayikh they used to work for the, the similar pattern my teachers their teachers and their teachers and generations up to the 14 1200 years ago all they used to do the same in my acts of worship for example i used to do medit i used to meditate and one meditation would be or contemplation would be seven to eight hours without any disturbance without any movement i used to sit for seven to eight hours as we sit in tashahhud namaz tashahhud i was never tired my legs were never tired my neck was never tired muscles were never stretched this is not a miracle thousands of people of our early generation used to do the same there was not even a hint of yawning or dozing off that's why the people of those generations they had dedication and commitment and they produce great scholars scientists and leaders in all fields of study our body has some vital organs brain heart lungs liver and kidneys and at the same time we has our hands arms legs feet different limbs those people who worked for long hours long focus who worked hard and they were never tired and never defocused they worked like the vital organs of the community of human beings and we are now we have become like hands and feet and legs and lower arms we have become nazuk people after 20 minutes our focus is gone 
help with this focus this is wrong theory destructive theory misguiding theory just to take away i don't go to further i don't want to say further thing the leadership from future generation i know many other things which i can't speak i can't i don't want to say we need to work hard for long times to concentrate on knowledge with increased focus and alertness like vital organs not like limbs now young people they dedicate their mental cognitive energy to platforms such as social media encompassing facebook they spend hours and hours i don't understand where their philosophy of focus goes at that time instagram snapchat tiktok <laughs> don't think i really know all these tools i am very simple man person i get help from those who know <laughs> we spend hours and hours on facebook on instagram on snapchat on tiktok on twitter which is now called x <laughs> madam khadija is shocked just a few weeks before they have given the name x whatsapp and we expend countless hours engaging in various types of games and our focus continues with the whole thing game including supports like fifa for football we watch the whole hours and hours action games like call of duty <laughs> formula 1 racing game immersive experience like fortnite <laughs> which delves into fantasy and virtual reality realm my hamad bhai sheikh hamad my sultan shams sabre sheikh hamad they are thinking where did kibla abu ji got this name where did he get this name we didn't tell him so there are many other people who can teach me <laughs> so we watch videos on tiktok for hours and hours and tireless we scroll all platforms so what is happening the result of this is vn is gone depth has gone seriousness has gone hard work has gone struggling and striving hard has gone and as a result the second agenda is that every one has been made confined to his own self nothing beyond his life finished no leadership because leader does not think of his own self leader thinks beyond his own self now in our lives because of all these tamasha no one can see beyond their own life the world is becoming vnless we are only concerned with their ourselves we are concerned with our degree my degree this is our vn my degree my money my profession my children my family my health my job my comfort my skill my house my car my asset my choice my life my freedom nothing beyond yourself this is the whole life is this teaching of holy prophet sir is this the teaching of the quran is this the message of almighty allah sent through the prophets where we are going where we are getting the ideas from are we following allah and his prophet muhammad command or are we following something else which are leading us astray this is the whole life now these are the fitnas 
challenges, tests and tribulations of our time. Now, many scholars have emerged, short clips scholars and short podcast scholars. Everything is by design. The platforms are creating limits, limits, limiting our mind. YouTube shorts are limited to a maximum of 60 seconds and minimum length is 15 seconds. What to talk of 20 minutes or half an hour? Now they are taking you to 60 seconds and 15 seconds. Instagram reels, length is 90 seconds. Twitter or X is 2 minutes and 20 seconds. These are the lengths. So now the viewers are in habit of scrolling and not absorbing. We scroll, we don't absorb. And we, the, the, the whole culture us is cutting off, cutting us off from the knowledge. Now we need only breaking news of knowledge. We need only flash news of knowledge. Headlines of knowledge. Nothing else. It means no knowledge, no depth, no clarity, no concept, no vision, no future. So we have to change our habits and we have to bring our habits in accordance with our earlier pious generations and in accordance with the Sunnah of Holy Prophet and his companions and Ahlul Bayt and the great Imams of the Ummah and in accordance with the commands of Almighty Allah. We shouldn't take the concepts from I have seen that time. I have myself lectured for six hours, seven hours, from Isha to Fajr. I didn't see a single person feeling tired. What has happened to people now? And I mentioned you the whole, whole history. We are moving towards wrong direction. I can't say that I am trying to saving everyone, but at least I am trying to save you. So be wakeful, be cognizant, be conscious, be heedful, and be true traveler towards the path of Allah and keep your focus and hard work for long, long time. The more you make your habit of hard working, the more you gain in this world and the life hereafter. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ جزاك الله We are grateful to Hazul Sayyidi Shaykh al-Islam for delivering such an important and vital message, especially relevant to our contemporary times. And I hope, inshallah, we all take heed as parents, as young people, to Shaykh al-Islam's message. And may Allah give us a tawfiq and uh, ability to...